Good evening, everyone. My name is Heather Belgian with the YSU Office of Alumni and Events. Thank you for staying with us. WebEx was having a few technical difficulties, so we hope we've got the audio and we're so pleased that you've joined us tonight. I'm here with Claudia Berlinski, director of the McDonough Museum of Art, who will be speaking on the Emerging Artist Program. Before I introduce Claudia, I'd like to mention that she will take questions at the conclusion of her lecture. So as you think of questions, feel free to type those into the Facebook comments and the WebEx chat. Claudia Berlinski is a native of Buffalo, New York, where she earned her BFA in printmaking from Buffalo State College. Ohio has been her home since receiving her MFA in printmaking at The Ohio State University. She has been teaching at Youngstown State University for 20 years, where she has also served in the Department of Art as Foundations Program Coordinator and Assistant to the Chair. Most recently, she has taken on the role of Director of the John J. McDonough Museum of Art. In addition to her responsibilities at the university, she exhibits nationally and regionally, contributes to print portfolio exchanges, and curates and adjudicates group exhibitions. Her work is included in several private and public collections nationwide. She previously curated the Thomas's Family Endowment Gallery at the Jewish Community Center of Greater Youngstown. Claudia, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Heather. And uh, I'd like to thank the Office of Alumni Relations and you again uh, for inviting me to do this. What a wonderful opportunity to talk about the museum and our programs. Uh, so I could assume that most of you know uh, the background of the McDonough Museum or anything about it, but I'll just go over a little bit about the museum in case there are a few people who are unfamiliar with us. So we are an extension of the Department of Art and the Cliff College of Creative Arts. And we're located on Wick Avenue right across from the Butler Institute. So it's a great location, two art museums, one across from the other. Um, we, do, we look like a very small building from Wick Avenue, but we actually have two lower floors full of galleries and and we have uh, rotating exhibitions. We are a non collecting museum. So, at the beginning of uh, fall and spring semester, we have um, our big opening shows where we invite artists from outside of um, the university. Some of them are internationally renowned, some of them are nationally renowned, and some of them are regional or local. And then um, usually after that, we have the BFA exhibition, which highlights our graduating seniors from the art department and the art program. Um, in the spring, we also squeeze in between those the student juried annual where students from the art department or anyone who's taken an art class that year um, has the ability to enter um, a number of works in a show that are juried from an outside juror. And then also in the spring, we have um, our MFA grads. So we have a new MFA program in the Department of Art and um, they will have their thesis exhibition at the McDonough Museum. So. Um, about two years ago, I was started working at the McDonough Museum part time and I was teaching. I was still teaching in the art department and I was putting in, you know, about a half time schedule at the museum and um, doing some of the same things that I am doing now as director. I just was appointed director July 1st. So um, we were uh, thinking of new programs and events that we could have that would be cross-disciplinary, that might be more inclusive of um, community members, whether, whether it's artists or um, other sorts of people in the university community, um, as well as the Youngstown community. And so um, it was about in April of 2019 where we decided we wanted to do this Emerging Artists Program. And um, what that is, is uh, that the museum provides an opportunity for early career artists to have a solo exhibition, which is huge, whether you're um, early career or mid career or late career to have a solo exhibition. And um, we wanted to help bolster their art careers. And so we, uh, we came up with some um, parameters for, for the the kind of artists we were looking for, and we decided it should be a regional artist, uh, someone with within about 250 miles of Youngstown, 
And then we also, um, we wanted to, when we wrote a call for entry, which is how we get the word out, we put things on social media on our website. Sometimes we would advertise and it's called call for entry. Um, we wanted to encourage those with underrepresented uh, viewpoints and voices. And um, also they have to be 18 years of age or older. They cannot be enrolled in an undergraduate program. And let's see what else I have this written down. And um, not an alumnus of the Youngstown State Art Program. And we wanted to do that because we wanted to pull in other people and give them the opportunity to show early in their career in the museum. We do provide other opportunities for alumni and we just felt like we wanted to open this up. So, so that was in April of 2019. And then, um, you know, we put the call out and hoping to get high quality artists. You know, we wanted to maintain the same standards that we have for the other artists who show in the museum. And I was having a conversation with uh, Dean Phyllis Paul, who's the Dean of the Cliff College. And she said to me, well, you know, President Tressel's daughter, Whitney, is a photographer. I wonder if there's some way we could get her into the museum, not, not even really talking about the Emerging Artists Program. And I thought, well, um, I, I did know she was a photographer. She's a commercial photographer, and uh, she's worked for a number of years. She has a BFA in photography from RIT. And I thought, well, let me go look at her artwork. You know, maybe she would be a good candidate um, for the Emerging Artists Program. So I looked at her website and she had excellent, has excellent photography on her website, um, mostly commercial work. Uh, she has worked for um, travel magazines for travel programs where she takes um, budding photographers all over the world to do photography projects. And she's also worked as a photo editor where she works on the layout and the design of um, the photography in magazines for a particular article or story. And um, as I said, the work was very good. So I contacted her and uh, talked to her about whether she had any personal projects, things that might be more uh, fine art photography. And of course she did. And um, so then I, she was a pleasure to work with. And I, uh, you know, we went back and forth for several months um, looking at her for more fine art photographs and kind of picking out the pieces and trying to put together things that would work well. Um, as a body of work in a single gallery. And that's um, very typical of what a curator would do with, with almost any artist, unless they have a show that's already put together. Um, and so, you know, it was a, a lot of conversation, a lot of working with her. We worked very well together. And she became our first emerging artist in the fall of 2019. And um, it was uh, it was a, a pretty wonderful show. It was well received, and um, I am going to try to share a little video with you that um, that she did that the uh, the marketing office on campus put together through a photographer um, that they've worked with um, who did some videos. So I'm going to try to share this. If you just give me a moment. There we go. Oh. I am a travel photographer and photo producer. Um, my background is mostly in publishing, other magazines, websites, social media. I'm also a fine art photographer and always do that artistry on the side. My style is very contemplative. It, it, hopefully makes you pause. It's a bit more uh, timeless than contemporary. And it always involves travel. There's always a thread of exploring cultures, different pockets of the world. A lot of the exhibit is from my time in the camper van. So I traveled the country um, the past couple of years by myself, uh, photographing, um, gosh, everything, um, but more so taking moments to make more meaningful work than what I've just been doing for my job. And so I think it's important to be an example to other women and young girls too, that you know you can travel, you can do these 
non-traditional lifestyles and uh, it'll all be okay. I love exploring. I love discovering. It makes me feel alive more so uh, being dormant, I guess. I love when there is a, a bit of a quirkiness to an image. Like it makes you stay longer when you're looking at the image because we're inundated with so many images per day that um, something that makes you kind of stop and be still and how the frame is organized, I guess, keeps me at it. So whether it's a play with color or there's humor, some irony, I guess making the viewer stay longer in the photograph is always intriguing and challenging. This is my first solo show. I've, I've had pieces in group shows, actually, in, in Brooklyn, New York City, Rochester, New York. Um, but uh, never my own solo show of just my work. Uh, I get to have it in my hometown of Youngstown, uh, which makes it even more special. So I think sharing, you know, people around here have known that I've been photographing and been in the art, um, but a space for them to come see a small portion of what I've been up to uh, is really exciting. So I, hopefully you got to see that. Um, you never know when you're doing these Zoom meetings, you practice them and then, um, you know, or WebEx, in any kind of online format. So, yeah, so one of the things that really cinched that exhibition for me was when she told me the story about the camper van. And I, I thought, oh, there's, there's no way we're going to turn this artist down because it was amazing to me. She, what she said to me was that she would go on these photo shoots for travel magazines and they would take her there, you know, fly her there. She'd be in a place a half a day and they'd shuttle her off somewhere else. And she said that at one point she would wanted to go back and spend more time in these places and, you know, sort of see the people, meet the people and get a more in-depth feeling of the places that she had been for a few hours at a time. And so that's at the point at which she decided to get the camper van and she did everything herself. She shopped for that van, she picked that out, she took it for repairs and, um, and then she traveled through North America by herself, which you can imagine it could be a very intimidating uh, prospect for a young woman, um, for anyone really, but particularly for a young woman. and. Um, you know, she, she just took it, took the bull by the horns and went with it. And I don't think it was always easy, but it was probably a very rewarding, I'm sure a very rewarding experience for her. And the photographs that came out of it were really wonderful. And the thing about having this emerging artist program where you feature regional artists, you figure they're within 250 miles, their family, their friends are going to come out and see them. And, you know, because it's a proud moment for them and you get a lot of people in the museum that have never been there and you get this wonderful response and, and it can be very, um, motivating and exciting for our students, you know, and for other young artists who come into the museum to see the potential to see what might be the next step for them. And so um, in a lot of ways, having this kind of program is like a community service, you know, to artists of all kinds, and then also um, a service to our students as well, not only to see well established artists, but to see artists that they kind of can, um, you know, feel like, oh, I'm almost there, somebody they can really relate to. And so then as we were waiting for artists to submit materials, then, you know, we're always like um, one or two steps ahead and, and having to plan our exhibitions. And so I was already looking for someone to um, fill that bill in, in the spring. So that would have been spring of uh, 20, the semester that just passed. and. Um, so we had talked about wanting to do this each semester, you know, well, fall and spring anyways, summer was always, uh, we weren't sure about doing it in the summer, but fall and spring and um, trying to make space for a, a, an emerging artist in each of those semesters. And we do have four galleries in the museum, so it's entirely possible. So, um, so I'll give credit where credit is due. That was, uh, 
uh, Dean Paul's idea to contact Whitney, and then I followed through on it. And then the next artist um, was discovered in Canvas Cleveland magazine, which is a Cleveland arts magazine put together by the Jewish Community Center of Greater Cleveland. And um, we run ads um, in that magazine, and so we get copies of it, and they have a feature that's called Who's Next? And they had um, six or more um, up-and-coming artists in there, and um, Angela, who's the assistant to the director, said, hey, why don't you check these artists out? You know, since you're waiting for other artists to submit things, you might find somebody in here. And as a curator, that's really part of my job, you know, to really make sure I'm aware of what's going on nationally, internationally, and regionally. And so, you know, I have a lot of connections in the Cleveland, Akron, Pittsburgh area. So I'm aware of artists um, there and I'm constantly looking for artists on Instagram and in magazines and wherever else. I'm going to see artists, you know, going to other receptions and uh, galleries. And so um, I discovered this uh, artist in whose next article and her name was Kimberly Chapman. And I was immediately drawn to her work. It is a ceramic sculpture made from porcelain handmade from porcelain. And it just, um, the images that I saw in the magazine just really, I don't know, just uh, hit something in me that I, I just felt like they were so strong and so meaningful. And um, so anyways, she, let me give you a little background on her. I do actually want to share a little video from that Who's Next article because of course, it's better. Lectures are always better with visuals. Um, but she had a 30 year career in marketing in the Cleveland area and she had painted, you know, all her life. Um, and then she decided when it was time to retire from her job, she or her career, she wanted to go to art school. So she enrolled at Cleveland Institute of Art. She applied, she was accepted, she studied ceramics there. And uh, she graduated with a BFA. And at the time that I met her, it had been about three years that she was out of school. And her work is so strong. Um, every time she would enter a juried exhibition where there would be um, someone who would pick out the best pieces for the exhibition, she would get one or two pieces in. So she had been in a number of juried exhibitions, but never had a solo exhibition. And um, I just, I'll just say that she is a grandmother. And so it's interesting, again, has a, she has a very interesting story, just as Whitney did, that she has a whole second career at this stage of her life and, and she's an emerging artist. And so, you know, you can be an emerging artist at any point in your life. And uh, so let me see if I can share this screen with you. Okay, so here is the article from Canvas Cleveland, who's next, Kimberly Chapman. You can see her there in her studio. She has a lovely studio. And she is also a lovely person. And she is very exuberant, has more energy than I can ever hope to have. And um, you know, so I worked with her for a number of months to kind of um, edit her work down to uh, uh, small groups, small bodies of work that I felt would be interesting together in the galleries. And um, you can see one of the pieces. This is a piece we did have in the exhibition. Um, so this is related to her Shooter Babies series. Um, her artwork deals with um, some very difficult socio-political issues um, and things like school shootings, uh, suppression of women, domestic violence, uh, immigration, refugee um, crisis issues. And she, you know, they're, they're very, uh, they really pull on your heartstrings and, and you can see the passion she has uh, that she puts into the, this work and the depth of the meaning and um, so let me scroll down here. Here are a few of the shooter babies. So she, these you'll see in the video and I can talk about it a little bit after you watch the video, but let me see if I can get this to play as well. Oops, let's start this over. Okay, 
I hope the sound is okay on this. Sometimes it isn't as good coming from the internet. There's something about clay, there's something about ceramics, it's very tactile. You always have to touch it, you always have to hold it in your hands and feel it. It's so personal. Clay is a very personal medium. Clay is so malleable and has such a wonderful um, feel to it. And it's just, it has such an incredible capacity for memory. One of the things I've always been interested in is what's left behind. When everything is over and finished, what's left behind? What are the feelings that are left behind? What are the, um, the actions that one might do with what's left behind? Um, I think I really like looking at struggle and human nature. How can you persevere against impossible odds or sorrow or loss? Being an artist, you have to find the voice within and it's just so wonderful when your art can be such a part of you and have historic meaning, have personal meaning, and really just become something that's, that's permanent. The thing that happens in the studio is that one hour turns into six or eight hours and the time just flies and you're left with a piece that, you, that usually I have almost no idea of what I was gonna start with, none at all. And whatever is meant to be is what comes out of that that time that I spend with the clay. I always feel like the, really the clay chooses what's happening almost more than, than I do. So, um, yeah, so you saw in her video working on some of the pieces that um, she actually had in the exhibition and um, I, I do have some exhibition photos, a few of those. I'll share those as well. And let's see here. So, so let's, let's look at this one first. So um, this is a photo that shows some uh, visitors looking at the shooter babies. So these little guys, you saw her kind of pressing the porcelain material into um, a mold that was originally used to make porcelain dolls. So you could see their face, that's how they make them. They use a mold so they can mass produce them. And then she would add her own hand-built embellishments to them. And all of these had some sort of costume or disguise um, she was trying to get in, into the head of the child and imagine what sort of ways a child disguises themselves to make themselves feel safe and, and to sort of pull that empathy out of the viewer to, to really feel what it must feel like um, as a child in that scary situation, you know, and so um, as I said, you know, her work is very passionate and um, she really tugs on the hard strings. Um, another piece she had um, deals with domestic violence in her own family. Um, I believe it was her great grandparents. Um, and they had a, a violent relationship. Um, and, and then here, you, so you can see an image, a photo in the back of the two of them. And she has that photo mirrored so that one image, one side is clear and one side, and the other side, which is repeated. Um, is blurry. And then she has on the lower right part of the image there, she has some hand-built um, ceramic items that are household items that could be used as defensive weapons. And, um, and so, again, dealing with difficult situations and topics. And the title of this exhibition was called Hush. And um, because of that, some of these are subjects that we don't like to talk about. Um, or talk about in certain company or talk about with children or sensitive people. And, but they are things that we deal with and are real. Um, here is a, an image uh, that we use for social media um, about her gallery talk. So that's the other thing we have our emerging artists do gallery talks and, and um, they're, they're great. And a lot of our artists do gallery talks in general. Um, they're really insightful and it's really uh, helpful to people for people who are listening to understand where they're coming from. And it's very helpful for students as well. And this is um, an installation with um, these 
figurative sculptures are loosely figurative. Um, you know, they don't have details of faces and things like that, like the shooter babies did. Um, and they're adults and children and they're stargazers and they're inspired by a stargazer sculpture that is at the Cleveland Museum. And she sees these as those looking up to the skies, to the heavens, you know, um, in hopes of finding a new life um, as an immigrant or a refugee. And they, the sculptural pieces that are hanging above them are kind of the remnants of rafts um, and um, sort of hanging there in oars. So um, again, a, a difficult topic. And you can see her here um, giving her gallery talk. Now, a lot of artists like to do their lectures or their talks in the lecture hall so they can show slides, but gallery, um, Kimberly insisted on doing it right in the gallery. So it was more or less like a strolling um, docent led tour with the artist. And you can see her there talking about the pieces and touching them, which we would never allow visitors to do. Um, and then uh, this last image, um, we did a, a partnership with, um, it's part of another program we have, which I will discuss on August 27th at 7 p.m., which I hope that you'll tune back in to watch. Um, so another initiative that the museum has is called SCRI, which is a literary collaboration with any number of organizations or groups or uh, professors. And so with Kimberly, we, part we, we also use this scribe initiative to have students work on journals. And I just wanted to show this image of some of the people visiting the exhibition looking at those. And so again, on August 27th at 7 p.m., I'll be talking about that program more in depth if you'd like to tune in to that. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing this and then um, talk a little bit more. So anyways, um, as I said, we we like to try to have, um, you know, a, an emerging artist each semester. We did actually have a couple of other performing artists and um, one that we had, um, I believe it was the same semester as Whitney. So that would be fall of 2019. Um, we had a performing performance multimedia um, artist from the Cleveland area, and I learned of her because, you know, I see all these invitations, I get all these invitations to opening receptions, and then I see, uh, you know, images on uh, social media of them, and there was this, uh, this uh, vocal performer, she just seemed to be like the hottest commodity at these um, art exhibitions and openings in Cleveland. And I checked her out. She has a website and she goes by the name of um, the Uno lady and her real name is Christy Ebert. And I will, I have a quick snippet of her performance at the museum, but I'll just give you a little background on her. She travels with this um, home, not homemade, but she has a suitcase that she modified to have like a mixer, and, you know, a, a synthesizer in it where she can run audio loops um, to go to coincide with her live singing. And then she has um, uh, projections of videos on her uh, and the wall behind her. And she has this amazing voice. And um, a lot of her imagery deals with um, ecology and um, issues with the environment. She's an environmentalist and um, she writes a lot of her own music. She produces CDs and music you can uh, find online. She has a great website, um, unolady.com, if you want to check her out. And she has other videos there. Uh, but she did a lovely performance at the museum and she said that it was the nicest space she'd ever performed in. And to this date, you know, and she's still, you know, she's not touring or anything. Um, so, you know, I'm sure she'll maybe have some others that that are better than ours. But we had a nice crowd. And I am going to try to share this video. As I said, this one's shorter than the other ones. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what, what her performances are like. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So that was that was a fun performance, and um, I hope that we can do more of that. So we're not just looking for visual artists; we are looking for performing artists, performance artists, um, you know, dancers, any you know, any sort of artists, and um, and uh, so. Although I said that we were going to have, try to have uh, emerging artists each, each semester, um, this fall semester, we are hosting the art department faculty show from YSU, YSU art department. And so that's an, a large number of people and we will likely be filling all four spaces. So we did not book an emerging artist for this fall, unfortunately. But fortunately, we will be opening the museum at the end of August for visitors, um, you know, of course, safely, you know, with distance and only allowing so many at a time. Um, but we will have the faculty show up and um, and we'll look forward to spring for our next emerging artist. And I do want to just give you a sneak preview of, of him. Um, he is from the Youngstown. He lives in Youngstown. Let me just say that. He's not from the Youngstown area. He's from Youngstown. So his name is uh, James Sean Crum. He grew up on the east side of Youngstown, but he's lived in San Diego, New Orleans, Columbus, and New York City. Um, he's not had any formal art education. So he's a self-taught painter, and his paintings are uh, amazing. And I can't wait to see what he completes for the exhibition. So I asked him for a little bit of a statement just so you could get an idea of what his work would be like. And he is exploring the very real possibility that as a gay black male, he exists within several realities. Painting allows him to regroup and reconcile the conflicts that ensue. His art practice is a refuge, a cosmic exhale and a record of existence. The creative urge frees him from anger, transforming it into effort. And um, he shared a couple of images with me that I will share with you and uh, and hopefully it will excite you enough to bring you to the museum when he when he comes in the spring. So this first image is called Chasing the American Dream. This painting is a visual description of maneuvering mainstream America under the disorientation of many layers of otherness. And so, um, again, you really get a sense of the passion involved with the work that he's doing. And that I just think they're, they're really wonderful. Um, this second piece is called Hair. Um, hair is the result of an interest in the differences between rabbits and hares. I see the distinctions between these two animals as a metaphor for early childhood experience, one that is protective and nurturing versus one that is vulnerable and exposed. Having grown up in the inner city, I identified with the hair, eyes wide open and forced to confront at an early age the fragile environment in which I was surrounded. So, um, you know, seeing these images, seeing what he had to write about them, um, really, you know, reinforced my decision to invite him. And um, I, I just, like I said, I can't wait to see what he has in store for us. So in terms of, you know, finding out about our programming and when these shows will open and who the artists are, um, you can look for us online in several places. You can go to our website at mcdonoughmuseum.ysu.edu. You can check us out on social media. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you by chance happen to know anyone that you might want to recommend um, to have a look at their work for an, the possibility of an emerging artist exhibition, or if you are one yourself, um, or if you have any other questions that you don't get to ask tonight, you can contact me at McDonough Museum of Art at ysu.edu. So, or you can go, I think probably on the website is my other email address as well that goes directly to me and not just to the general museum email. Um, but yeah, I can reach out to me for any of those reasons or for anything else that you wanna talk about that has to do with the McDonough. And, I think that's all I have to say about the Emerging Artists Program. I feel pretty talked out about that. <laughs> but um, if anybody has questions, I would love to answer some. 
Great. Well, we do have some questions here, Claudia. Um, a couple of months ago during the stay at home orders, you gave the community a challenge to find artwork from a few collections and then recreate it using objects found around the home. Do you feel that the McDonough challenge brought some new interest to the museum, especially with younger school age children? Well, I, I think so, because um, I know that the children who worked on it um, were really excited. I heard from their art teachers about how fun it was and how, you know, they, the teachers thought it was great because they got to incorporate some art history into their art classes. And there was like a really good hands-on assignment to go with it. And I do think that it, it brought some attention to the McDonough Museum. You know, the big museum to go see when you're a kid in Youngstown with your school trips is the Butler, you know. And so we do have some school groups that come in, they'll make it a, a two for one. So they'll go to the Butler and come to us. But but I do think that it, it probably, uh, you know, made a lot more people aware. And even the parents of those children, you know, who had to help them out at home doing these projects and, and to see it on, on all of our social media accounts and share it with everyone and have all their friends and family see it. Yeah, yeah, I hope, I hope, and I think it did. It seemed like a great way to get the community involved. Yeah, and we, we had, had a wonderful and huge response, yeah. That's wonderful. Well, another question from Facebook from Kimberly Chapman is what are you most excited about in your new position? I am most excited about really being able to devote all of my time um, to the museum. Um, I loved teaching, I love teaching, but um, it was hard, I'll admit it. It was difficult to put one hat on and teach and then go, you know, switch my other and put my museum hat on, go over to the museum a few hours, go back to my, you know, to another class and, and go back and forth and divide my time. And um, I think I got some good things done in that time, even though it was, you know, a, a lot less hours that I was spending at the museum. And so I feel like with um, all of this extra time that I have there now, I can really focus my energies in one place and uh, do more and more great things, you know? That's really exciting. That's yeah. Great. Um, another question from Facebook. Do the emerging artists need to be young? No, no. As long as you're 18 years of age or older, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, just adult. <laughs> okay. And are the receptions and gallery talks open to the public? Yes, all of our receptions and gallery talks are open to the public. As I said, unfortunately, we won't be having any group gatherings in the museum this semester. So you can look on our social media or our website for any talks we might have. While the faculty show is up, we're gonna try to do some Facebook Live or some Instagram uh, Live um, gallery talks with them, short ones, and, um, and then, you know, maybe some other virtual programming as well. And the Department of Art has a lecture series that we we have, we hold in our lecture hall at the museum. So those won't be held on uh, in the museum either. Those will be online. So we, we will, we usually list those on our website as well. And you can check the Department of Art for that. So I would say look for all kinds of events that we normally would have in person online right now but in the future yeah all of our stuff is is free the only thing that has not been free is our mad about the arts um fundraiser event but everything else yes okay um and another question from facebook will you do more docent led tours with participating artists thinking of james's upcoming exhibition well um I, I don't know. Uh, it would be up to him, I think, if he wants to do it with slides in the lecture hall or if he would prefer to do it in the gallery. I think, you know, it depends on how the artist is more comfortable speaking. And sometimes the artist, if, if they've been working a long time, they might have additional work they want to show or a process that they want to show in slides that we don't have in the gallery, you know. So sometimes it's an advantage to do the slide lecture, but um, but yeah, the gallery tours I think are really popular. So I definitely will ask him if he would like to do a strolling talk in the gallery for his. Okay, and someone asks if the Solomon Gallery is open. That would be not at the present time. 
Yeah, not at the present okay. time. That that will be opening in the fall as well. And okay. there is a, a usually we they start out with a foundations exhibition where we feature uh, freshman work for semester work from the previous semester, and then. Oh, we sometimes have visiting artists show in there. There is, we do a, a postcard art show from high school juniors and seniors in the fall. What else? We will be hosting, because we had to close down in March, we were not able to host the BFA and the MFA exhibitions. And so um, the, the one graduate student who completed her program in May, she will actually be having her exhibition um, in Solomon Gallery in the fall. So it'll be great to see her work live, even though she wasn't able. It was so disappointing, you know, as you can imagine, to have your thesis and go through that and you finish the program and you get to graduate, but you, you know, you, you know, get to show your work to your friends and your family. So um, she'll be doing that. We also have an MA student, Master in Arts Education, who was supposed to, who graduated also, who will be showing her work. So they'll be open. Um, and again, probably not receptions, but they will be opening with, um, you know, allowing a certain number of people in at a time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it really seems like there's no limit to the programming that you're doing and that you're going to do in the future. So it'll be really exciting for us to continue to follow along. Yeah. 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 And is there anything that you wanted to say in closing? Um, just thank you again for uh, inviting me to do this. It was wonderful. I love talking about the museum. And sometimes when I get going, it's hard to get me to stop. Um, but um, just please come back. Um, we're going to be doing two more lectures about museum programs. The next one will be about Scribe, which is that literary collaboration, as I said. And uh, Christy McCullough will be joining me as a special guest. Yes. And, then, and then in September, it will be Muse, right? It's right. September. September 10th, I believe. And that is a collaboration between the McDonough Museum and the Dana School of Music. So um, Kivi Khan Lipman, who's a professor in the Dana School of Music, he'll be joining me for that one, and we'll be talking about the Muse program. So, yeah, lots of stuff <laughs> we can right. tell people about. Well, we're really glad that you're going to be coming back, and we really thank you for joining us today, Claudia. It's been very informative. So thank you. Thank you to everybody for watching. Um, you can learn more about the McDonough Museum of Art by following them on Facebook and also visit their website, www.ysu.edu forward slash McDonough museum. And just to mention the next alumni lecture series program will be Thursday, July 30th at 7 p.m. Jessica Williams, a 2015 and 2019 graduate with a bachelor's and master's degree in social work, will join us to talk about resiliency and child welfare. And Phyllis Johnson from the social work department will also be present. So we hope you'll join us for that. And thank you all so much for attending and good night.